Hi. Um, hello to all. Um, welcome and thanks for joining me for another video. Today is going to come across maybe a little bit more like a, a lesson, a teacher teaching with people, so I hope not. But um, I do think this is important to understand where, once again, chronic fatigue syndrome came from. My chronic fatigue syndrome came from and also all the, all the problems I had then after that as a result of. And I'm going to carry on with my depressing, dark, stressful childhood years in a, in a separate video from this one. Um, I might still do that also today. Okay, so this article was the effects of chronic stress on your health by Active Beat. I'm going to read just as is because the first, uh, it's very well, well written and then I will elaborate where it actually has um, a specific re uh, uh, relevance to my situation. But I think that you will start tying the knots together because most of it has got relevance to my situation. <clears throat> Your body's fight or flight response to stress was designed to quickly mitigate any potential damage imposed by short-term acute injury or illnesses. This can include physical illness or psychosocial problems such as poverty, job loss or the death of a loved one. Now, I had job loss when I was boarded at the age of 30 because I could not work anymore as a result of chronic fatigue syndrome. And that whole boarding process was also very traumatic and I will deal with it when I come to that stage of my life in um, a separate video that will, might be still sometime in the future. But I did experience the stress around job loss, the stress of losing that income, the fact that what you have studied for at university to make you uh, become a valuable part in the economic cycle and 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 to be financially independent was all the rug was just pulled from under me at the age of 30 your immune system your immune system responds by increasing the production of disease fighting white blood cells and releasing cortisol into the bloodstream just going to quickly i did a lot of research on this <laughs> I am going to write this. This vlogging is going to make me study and do a PhD degree here in the privacy of my own home on different issues. Because once again, I am pulling the rug out in, in, a, in a different sense. I am not keeping, um, I'm not limiting limiting things within a acceptable framework um, yeah that's typical of my personality okay what is cortisol it is the body's primary hormone and cortisol surges when we perceive danger and causes all the symptoms we associate with fight and flight so it increases blood pressure increased heart rate muscle tension digestive system slamming to a halt, resulting in nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. All the things that I said actually happened to me before an athletic event, before a music exam. And I was, from eight years on, this happened to my body day in and day out. There was just no rest. There was no there was not a single situation where this uh, onslaught on my system lifted for a bit because I was scared for my parents. I was frightened to death of my parents. So my home situation where it should have been a place of safety wasn't for me. Um, what causes high cortisol in the body is stress, only stress. 
Stress triggers a combination of signals from both hormones and nerves. These signals cause your adrenal glands to release hormones, including adrenaline and cortisol. The result is an increase in heart rate. Me with my heart problems now. I do have Barlow syndrome as well, which is a, 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 a heart valve prolapse. It's not going well with me, people. Um, I'm not a very healthy human being sitting in front of you here. I have so many struggles, which other people can't see with their naked eye. So they think I'm lazy. They, there's 110 things that people think that I am, which I'm not, because I don't go around trying to, I don't go around being the victim. I don't go around feeling sorry for myself. I don't go around complaining all the time. I put on a brave face and I put a smile on my face. And if I do have a bad day, I, um, I go to my room and I stay in my house and I don't let people come and visit me. And yeah, and that's that. So you won't see that part of my life. Maybe I'm going to expose it a little bit here on, on YouTube now for people to see. Um, increase in heart rate and energy um, is part of the, f the, the fight or flight response. And it is not good for um, somebody with heart problems. Any guys. <clears throat> So once the threat has been resolved, your immune system returns to its baseline for normal people. My immune system never got a chance to return to baseline. It was always in the highest gear all the time. When chronic stress occurs, the immune system never returns to baseline, but stays at a higher stimulated level. And you must know I, I did this this morning. I... Uh, got this off the internet this morning. Much like revving a car and keeping your foot on the gas, an overstimulated immune system is not sustainable and will result in problems. And I am the walking proof of that. What can happen to a person if that is the case? Let's take a closer look at the effects of chronic prolonged stress on one's overall health. The first one that they touch on is anxiety. People who are exposed to unremitting stress on a continuous basis may develop anxiety or panic attacks. And I was plagued with anxiety and panic, and panic attacks in, I think, I think when I started to cry like that, in primary school that I could not get myself to settle down and calm down again and my mom had to come and fetch me that I had a panic attack I think I had a flow a, a full-blown panic attack so I started to suffer from panic attacks as a elementary primary school pupil in eight nine ten years old which carried on for the rest of my life it got a little bit out of hand in my 20s and my 30s and it has calmed down. The heart attacks did not do me any favors. I now have um, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I get panic attacks, but for different reasons, not for social reasons anymore. People don't phase me anymore. I'm not scared of people anymore. People can do nothing to me. I, I fear death. Why I don't know? Um, like I said in the previous video, I think that dying from a heart attack is not such a bad way to go. I think there are far more worse ways to die. And I saw my uncle and my father die of heart failure. There's a difference between heart failure and a heart attack. Um, heart failure is then the, when the heart can't do its work properly anymore and you get that terrible build up of fluid on the lungs and in Afrikaans they call it the the, the duets rochel that what they must suck out um, 
that um, rumbling in the people in, in, in the people's chests and in their throat, which is like it just sounds like thick phlegm, which they a uh, thick phlegm, which they can't cough out and up. Um, that uh, situation, uh, that is a terrible, terrible way of dying. My my father for three weeks could not lie down anymore. He had to sit in a chair. That's how he had to sleep. It was it was tough to tough to watch. It was tough to watch. Um, so the release of stress hormones results in body systems being placed in high alert mode, ready to fight for your life or flee from danger. Your heart and breathing rate increases. Again, your heart rate increases, as do your energy levels and your alertness. In situations of chronic stress, and I believe that I was in constant stress. Like I said, my home environment was a stressful environment. I had a mother that screamed and shouted from the morning till night time. My father got it. The children got it. Everybody got it. She just screamed and shouted. She screamed and shouted at my dad till the day um, he took his last breath. The release of stress hormones, okay, sorry, I lost my place. In situations of chronic stress, your stress response never rests, resulting in exaggerated responses to seemingly minor stresses. And that's the story of my life. Uh, actually, in the previous video, when I spoke about how I reacted towards the teachers going on with me, completely and totally out of context, if I can say, and the other children just took it in their stride. Ah, the teacher is going on with me. I didn't do my homework. I will not do my homework again next week. And just go and sit back in the, in, in, in the desk, and that's the end of it. With me, it was, it just escalated into a whole situation that was completely out of control. And, um, I do think that it is a situation like maybe you get a, one, one of your children is autistic. You can't treat an autistic children the same as you treat your, the other healthy siblings. The situation is completely and totally different. The same with this woman. He's a beautiful black butterfly. You don't see butterflies anymore. You can't treat a Down syndrome child the same as you treat the other healthy children. You can't. Sometimes all it takes is the mere thought of your situation to bring on anxiety or a full-blown panic attack. And this is more what is happening to me now after the heart attack. The minute that I experience nauseousness, I think I'm in for the, my next heart attack. Here, my heart attack actually started here in the back of my neck. I never could understand it. If I explain to people, that's where I felt things going wrong. I, it sounded a bit like a crazy person until I went and, and, and listened to some YouTube videos on your vasovagal nerve, which actually starts here in the neck, I think, and it actually branches out through your whole body to all your organs, your stomach, your lungs, your liver, everything. The vasovagal is right through. And that's where I felt it. I felt it actually in the vasovagal nerve. The vasovagal nerve actually um, alerted me that something wasn't wrong. So now, if I get a stiff neck, because uh, fibromyalgia, which go hands in hand with chronic, chronic fatigue syndrome, <clears throat> um, affects your muscles. My muscles tense up. And I also think what has been affected and has become all uh, skewed is... The, the message my brain sends to my body as far as pain is concerned, that's completely not, not right anymore. Something that shouldn't cause me pain, it will send pain messages to, and I will be in pain. Um, muscles cramping up into knots, uh, which shouldn't be like that. Um, yeah, so I think the, the, the pain message and also the, the muscle, the, 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 Something goes wrong with the muscles. 
my, and, and it's not like a normal muscle pain. I always explain it as somebody cutting you open and throwing acid onto that, into your body, onto that muscle. It's, it's like a fire. It's, it's a sting. It's a, it's a burning sensation. You can't actually explain it to anybody. So I got into the habit, if I must go and work in the garden, or if I know I'm going on a long road trip, I, I will drink anti-inflammatories preventative, which is also not a good idea. But that's what I do. Because once, once the cramping starts, no matter how much med medicine I drink for it, I, I, I can't relax enough and, and get painless enough that I can carry on with my painting or my gardening that for that day I can't work anymore. Working for me is done. So if I if I drink preventative medicine, then I can work longer, but then I pray, pay the price. And normally not the next day, it takes two days. I normally feel it the second day after an injury or after I've overdone something uh, work-wise, overworked a muscle. The second day will be excruciating. The next day, not strangers if i twist my ankle i won't feel it the next day so much from the second day onwards it will be a nightmare so back to panic attacks and the panic attacks that i now experience as far as my my heart attack concerns when anxiety becomes out of control and affects your ability to function on a day-to-day -day level it's time to seek medical help the good news is that it is treatable with both medication and counseling. And unfortunately, I haven't considered counseling yet. That woman, when I went for the colonoscopy and the scope actually suggested that it's, I must maybe consider going for uh, counseling for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, for 20 years of my life, uh, we, I was in and out of psychiatrists and psychologists uh, offices, <coughs> consulting rooms, whatever you call it. And, um, but unfortunately, I can't drink medication. My system can't handle medication. So I can't drink mood altering medications or antidepressants because it will just make me extremely and totally sick. Now, I don't suffer from depression anymore, but I'm going to do the depression, but I'm going to do it last because there's some disturbing, uh, fact mentioned here which i said that i am going to discuss which most probably will upset a lot of people but um it's it's the truth it happens sorry i'm now back on to tea i i love coffee there's nothing nicer for me when that first the aroma of that first cup of coffee in the morning but I think I started to treat myself with only one cup of coffee in the morning. And um, then it became a little bit more regular. And I think my, that brought the heart palpitations on again. So much so that I had to go onto that tablet. <coughs> and I'm now my back on the D-Wagon. Um, yeah, not nice for me, but that's what it is. Okay, so then the, what does constant stress do to your car? To cardio, cardio, cardiovascular system. Exposure to stressful situations can cause your blood pressure, blood pressure to rise. My blood pressure is too high. I can't drink blood pressure medication because my system can't take medication. Chronic stress can keep your blood pressure high, especially if you react with anger. And I do get bursts of anger. I can control my emotions and suppress my emotions for X amount of time. But then it's like the last straw on the camel's back. And if you put that last little straw there, it's over. I will then, the, um, what do they say in Afrikaans? We say you've got a wach for your, for your mont. Um, I don't, I don't even try to control then what's coming out of my mouth. I will just say what I have observed and what I feel and what I think. Um, without thinking gets me into major major uh, trouble especially with my narcissistic mother because she doesn't want to hear the truth 
but um, and then I will get punished. I will get punished afterwards because I dared to say things that she doesn't want to hear. And then, according to her, I am of the devil. I am demon possessed. That's another story for another, for another video. But I had a letter in the last two weeks again of um, um, how Satan is in me. How she has saw saw the demons in my eyes. A video, another video. I've got videos forever on my life. And um, high blood pressure, how you react with anger, rage and hostility. I can't help it. After years of abuse, then I try to control it. I try to turn the other cheek. I try not to let it upset me. I try to let it be water off a duck's back. I try not to react to it. But if you are in somebody's presence and I... And after my father's death, I, I did go to my mother on a daily basis. I, I would sit with her from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock because the thought of her being alone in an old age home where she has um, uh, made everybody in the old age home dislike her. So she doesn't have any friends there which can come and sit with her and visit with her. I would go and sit with her and... Um, uh, I lost my my train of thought then there you now um, I'll just ma carry on it will come back high blood pressure increases your risk of stroke and cardiac arrest so none of the stress that my mom is putting me through now is um, really helping she knows my situation but she doesn't care she only thinks about herself if you also smoke, fortunately I don't smoke, overeat even if I like to overeat, I can't. I think I, I never overate, but I did pick up a lot of weight because I, I did eat what I want and when I wanted it. Didn't, I didn't look after my weight. Um, I don't even have a scale in my house. So um, I have lost with my stomach problems, I have lost quite a bit of weight and I don't know where it's going to end. I'm starting to look a little bit haggard for me in the in the face and around the neck area. Um, so overeating is not a possibility for me um, anymore. I never drank. I'm a teetotal com completely. I don't um, consume any alcohol, which that is the one blessing is that I never turned to drugs, alcohol or any form of addiction. Um, I could just as well have gone that way, but I didn't. Thank you. Um, to relieve your stress, and, and, and they call it self-medication, uh, you have increased your risk factors for cardiovascular disease even further. Fortunately, I liked exercise and running, and um, which also helped a lot to clear my mind and to sort of get me physically on the right track. The heart attack has put an end to that. After the heart attack, my life has never been the same, mentally and physically. High blood pressure is treatable. Doctor can't treat my high blood pressure. The medication makes me sick. Um, if you find yourself under chronic stress, have your doctor monitor your blood pressure and assist you in choosing a an healthier coping mechanism. I just want to blow my nose again. And I know some of you might find this boring, but I have three male friends, which I know are struggling with stress situations at this point in time. Two of them have uh, struggled a bit with um, <clears throat> uh, uh, turning to food to help them cope and feel better. Um, sleep disturbances. People who are exposed to chronically stressful life situations often complain of insomnia. Now at this point in time, and that's why I think the, the three bouts of COVID that I had, pardon, I'm drinking tea, so I'm starting to burp again. I shouldn't do that now. And um, this um, in, bowel and stomach inf inflammation that's going on 
um, <clears throat> has activated the chronic fatigue syndrome again because that might be why I've had this undertone of a sore throat coming and going and also more of a runny nose and having a day like yesterday and I have I had a few few evenings now where um, it's now getting a, a light very early I think I uh, was out this morning before five and it was already complete daylight and the sun it's light still about eight o'clock in in the evenings now that I have switched my light off at six o'clock I, you don't know, I don't have my light on at six o'clock, but that I closed up everything and I went to sleep. Two friends asked me, wanted to chat to me on WhatsApp last night around about eight o'clock and I wasn't online because I was sleeping. I do find that I am tired very early in the evening to the point where I cannot keep my eyes open. I cannot even try and do to look at something like a movie or whatever, I, I need to sleep. And then I sleep round the clock, some uh, waking up during the night, which is my, it's been like that all my life. Um, but then I sleep around the clock till about, well, I was up at half past four this morning because the animals, the, the first pinprick of sunshine coming through, the animals are up and then they will keep on bothering me until I also wake up. <coughs> Um, when I was so very sick after I had the sleeping problem where I, I couldn't wake up that was in my early 20s when I actually got boarded I just wanted to sleep all the time all the time that actually started in my high school years in my secondary school year where when I got home from school I needed to sleep and so much so that my mom will often wake me and say, you can't sleep all the time. You need to get up and start with your homework. But that is how bad it was. I needed to sleep. And, um, and I think that's why a lot of the times my homework wasn't done. I must know I had two music subjects. I was forced to do two music subjects. Um, when I get there, uh, I will discuss the fact that I wasn't allowed to choose my own subjects. What I was going to do at school I had to do what my parents told me to do which was horrific for me because it was two music subjects of which I had no talent for maths and science and um, in those days I don't know why our university system and school system placed so much emphasis on maths you must have maths for instance and you had to get like 85 percent or more for maths if you wanted to go into a medical studying a medical direction and um, you had to have maths if you want to apply for a bursary you had to have maths no matter what most of the directions that you actually choose to study in at university what is it with maths i don't use maths at all if you're a music teacher you don't use maths um although i know they say there's a correlation between being musical and 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 being mathematically inclined which explains a lot everything about my lack of musicality and my lack of being able to work with with figures um, <clears throat> but in so many professions you don't use maths if I if I'm a chef or a cook um, you don't need to be a mathematical genius to read a recipe two cups that's uh, one cup is 250 moles it's just crazy why why maths is so emphasized if 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 you become a motor mechanic you don't need maths if you are somebody that fixes the roads you don't need maths um yeah uh, i never can understand why maths has been rammed down to everybody's throat so almost every student must take maths whether you take it on higher level higher grade or whether you take it on standard grade standard level uh, easier level maths you had to do Anyways, which makes it absolutely a nightmare for those students who is not naturally inclined, that doesn't have an ability to do maths. School becomes a nightmare, especially on the days that you had maths, and maths was almost on every day uh, in your timetable. 
um, back to sleep disturbances. I don't know what maths in the school curriculum has to do with sleep disturbances. In any case, you suffer from insomnia. They may be bothered by racing thoughts, replacing the day's stressors over and over, or they may find themselves waking frequently during the night or waking early and not being able to return to sleep. I do not think that I suffer from insomnia anymore, although I do have times if I had an upsetting event where that will play through my mind over and over and over again and that that would make me not be able to sleep. But it's not like when I really was so very, very sick because there was a time I did try to commit suicide. That will be a, a video for another time. Um, and I went literally, for months I did, I did not really sleep. And when I did sleep, there was no rest going on because my mind was racing, racing, racing. Even if I thought I was sleeping, I wasn't sleeping. Um, <clears throat> and um, that was full-blown insomnia and the havoc that that can actually create in your life and in your system and your health. Yeah, that is a, um, a different matter altogether. So um, that causes increased level of the stress. So hormone in the bloodstream also affect your ability to rest. After all, the response to stress is fight or flight, not go to sleep and rest. Then it's about weight gain and weight loss. Um, I experienced in, in those terrible days weight loss, um, not weight gain. Um, but some of the antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs, they either have the side effect of making you eat or making you gain weight without eating or suppressing your appetite and, and make, make you lose weight. So when people, I will do this for my two, two friends who has got weight problems. Not that they, I know my one friend said he was at me this morning. He said last night he looked at all the videos. He gave me hope because I was actually starting to think of giving up, um, not carrying on. <laughs> it feels like I'm getting nowhere. Um, in any case, so um, I know that he, he watches or maybe he will watch when he bored or got a little bit extra time on his hands. When people are exposed to ongoing stressful situations, they may resort to emotional eating to reduce their anxiety or distress. They usually turn to high fat, high sugar, carbohydrate laden comfort foods. The initial spike in the blood sugar levels gives a momentary energy boost, but is soon followed by feelings of shame or regret as the le levels plummet. I I've always liked my sweet things. I won't lie about that. Cake, tarts, chocolate. Mm, I like my sweet things. Uh, thus, a vicious cycle has begun. Con conversely, they may become so depressed that they stop eating and lose large amounts of weight. Either excessive weight gain or loss can further negatively impact your health. Then, cognitive impairment. Oh, my tea is getting too cold for me. I like things that must be my food and my beverages, my hot beverages. I must blow my nose again. Must be so hot and so steamy that it burns my mouth. So I can never understand. And my middle sister was one that could do that. I think Irina also. They take time when they are out with friends or they have friends over eating their meal eating their meal is a you know is, a, is, is is social time i must eat when the food is put in front of me i must eat it while it's still war hot and progressively to the stage where it's only warm because if it goes past the level of of warmness i won't be able to stomach it if it's a hot dish so i normally tuck in very difficult for me to sit at a table and which is good manners etiquette wise to wait till everybody's food is has arrived so that everybody starts eating together i have 
exceptionally bad manners as far as that concerned because I need to eat my food when it is hot. So when it lands on my table, I eat it, especially when we, you sit outside because outside your food gets cold just like that. People that know me um, will not take too much of things because they know that's the way. I must blow my nose. <sighs> I quickly popped my tea in the microwave and um, these pants just wants to fall down and uh, another little anecdote came to mind so I'm just quickly going to digress a little bit before I'm going to go on with this um, and I want to go to the shop now not just to go and buy lunch for make tea and myself and I'm out of apples I put apples down for the wild birds and I'm out of apples um, we we are on hard times at, uh, um, in South Africa at the moment things are ex expensive I almost went back to the to the gas station the petrol station the filling station pardon me oh. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm going to edit that out of the video um, because I drink tea. Um, <coughs> um, I had a, a conversation. Um, I went to put some petrol gas in my car and um, <laughs> he, I asked for 400 rand and he put in 500 plus rand. And he yeah. came to the window and I could see that he was petrified that he overfilled. Because I suppose some other people would have said, I asked for 400 rand, um, it's not my problem. Which means that he would have had to pay in the extra 140 rand, which he has put too much extra in. Fortunately, I had the cash. It would have been a bigger issue if I did not have the cash but at that point in time I did have the ex extra cash and I feel petrol is not something that's really a waste um, I will drive it out eventually you know so um, <clears throat> I wasn't too upset and I could see the relief on his face but then we we engage in a conversation about how expensive life in South Africa has become and that's why I thought I must maybe go and vlog him and have this conversation over with him um, and how they feel the pinch as well. I don't know, after that conversation, I'm a little bit out of, out of the loop as far as that's concerned. I must maybe go and Google and see what's, what, what goes for what. <clears throat> that they now want to tax, or whether they have started to tax the essential food items like milk and bread. And uh, um, what else did he say? But in any case, we had this um, conversation and that petrol was going up again. And if gas and petrol, gas petrol goes up, then it's got a, a, a vicious cycle effect. Then everything goes up, and also with our electricity prices that keeps on hiking, 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 with our electricity problems that we have in South Africa with ESCOM, and um, then the food goes up. And well, we had a, 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 a little bit of a conversation regarding that but my point is <laughs> I've, I've digressed on the digression <laughs> um, it's tough people are struggling me included I um, I, I I feel it and, and 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 just to give you an example I don't really want to cut on feeding my animals that's not really something you can cut on but my the, the wild birds and the guinea fowl and it will break my heart if the the birds have i know if i'm dead uh, that's going to be something that's going to come to an end but my whole life that i'm staying here that's been something that's part of me that's one of the few pleasures i have in life and and it has become very expensive the little pouches that my cats eat, for instance, has gone up from 16 Rand to 24 Rand per pouch. I've got three cats. They used to get a pouch each in the morning and a pouch, pouch each in the evenings. I now divide two pouches between the three of them in the morning and two pouches between the three of them in the evening. Don't worry, they are not going hungry. They have a, a, a bowl of dry pellets which is standing there filled up on a full-time basis uh, permanently but they 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 come and ask for that wet food um, 
And they meow, meow, meow for it. If I'm, I'm in the kitchen in the morning to feed the dogs, they're there, then they want their little wet, wet, wet food treat, and the same in the evenings. <clears throat> um, the one lady at the pet shop came in, she's got a small little doggy. Um, she said that this doggy gets a chicken thigh every day. And um, she was so upset because the dry dog food went up um, from 90 something rand, the brand that she buys, to just over 100 and something rand. And the guy behind the tool said to her, don't worry, it's going to go up another time uh, in, in a week's time. The dog food that I buy already went up with 100 rand per bag. Um, the special budgish seed that I bought, I see I paid last year 50, 53 rand something something for it. It's now 130 rand for the same small little bag of budgie seed. Life has just become very, very, very expensive. So people are doing anything to make a little bit of extra money. And... Um, we have then people that go around to people's houses and then they have they carry a big bag with them and then they have like towels um, and washing cloths and socks and belts, maybe hats, um, uh, some n nice smelly things that you can put in your car, things like that. And then they, um, what do we call them, um, hawkers. And then they will hawk from door to door. Uh, like that. I'm just going to take a sip of tea. Yes, um, thanks. And um, this guy came to the gate and um, it must be hard. I think a lot of people don't open the door for them. A lot of people will close the door in their faces. A lot of people will be rude. A lot of people might experience also some financial hardship and don't really don't have the money to buy stuff that they don't need um, because obviously it's not the quality that I normally would have bought. It's not the color, the right color to fit into my kitchen. <clears throat> I bought almost 400 rands worth of rubbish, stuff that I really, really didn't need, but I really felt sorry for him and I said, okay, come in and we just sat under the the, <clears throat> the the roof there, Mac David calls it the shed. There is a table and I looked at everything. I didn't want to stand there on the pavement and go through everything. And he was now taking everything out and, and really doing his best sales pitch. And um, he had belts, for instance. And I said to him, now I, you know, I'm 57 my body has changed and I don't wear belts anymore because if you put the belt on, I think I've mentioned this before, then everything is soft and roly-poly down there. Then it, what, what doesn't pop up as a roll at the top will pop down as a bulge <laughs> at the bottom. And he started, no, 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 let me explain. Now, and he wanted to explain to me how I must wear the belt so that I can wear the belt. So I said, oh, no, you know, I'm 57. I don't need anybody to teach me how to put a belt on or not. I know my body. I know what I look like. I know what happens when I put a belt on. I'm definitely not going to buy a belt from you. And um, that's the story now. <laughs> Because my pants are falling down, my mind went to that story of this guy. So in the end, he said to me, well, um, you know, because he, he then said to me, but what about your husband? I said, I don't have a husband. Very, very clever of him. So he put two and two together and he said, as he went to the cage, he said, well, seeing that I'm alone, he said his wife died of cancer two weeks prior. He said, well, seeing that I'm alone <clears throat> and you alone, you know, take my number and then, uh, first of all, he said, take my number. If you need some stuff, then you call me. Then I will come to your house. I didn't want to be rude to the guy. So I took his number, obviously not with the intention of ever calling him or whatever. And um, I did take his number, never called him all. But he said to me at the gate, seeing that you alone and I'm alone, you know, we, we can WhatsApp a little bit. Well, that never happened. He did actually came to the gate again. And... Um, 
I just said to my dear, you must send him away because I wasn't list. I, I just didn't feel like I didn't need anything, and I didn't feel like I was like all the other people in the houses. I think. Um, yeah, my goodness, were a bit dry on that day. Terrible. But in any case, I didn't then um, let him in or cognitive impairment, lack of sleep, poor diet, anxiety and depression result resulting from stress can negatively impact your brain. Very, very, very important. I think a lot of people, oh, we are on 46 minutes already again. I'm not going to finish everything. <clears throat> Some people under continuous stress complain of fatigue from lack of sleep, memory problems. I think my memory problems were from um, the COVID. Impaired decision-making, confusion, and difficulty learning new information. This is due to the fact that stress hormones may impede the overall functioning of the neurons in the hippocampus in the brain. What is the hippocampus? That's the elongated ridges on the floor of each lateral ventricle of the brain, thought to be the center of emotion, memory, and the autonomic nervous system. They may also impair the functioning of the frontal lobes of the brain, which are responsible for higher level executive functions, such as reasoning, anger control, attention, and judgment. And I think the anger control and judgment with me has been affected and i think a lot of my viewers will probably say attention as well <laughs> because i'm jumping around all over the show <laughs> that's why it's very difficult for me to put a specific um, title to a video because i don't keep to topic and some people come to a specific video to learn just about that they don't they're not interested in my ramblings on about this and that and whatever. And it seems to be my, that's the style of my videos. Um, I am in conversation. <laughs> Let's use that as an excuse. <laughs> oh, the tea is already cold again. Then gastrointestinal upset. Listen to this one. I didn't even know this. Stress hormones, cortisol, released in the body's fight or flight reaction, affect the gastrointestinal system in several ways. First, cortisol stimulates gastric acid secretion, which can lead to indigestion and heartburn. Second, these hormones stimulate the intestine and bowels to quickly empty out, hence the possibility of diarrhea. Thirdly, these hormones can cause a person to be most susceptible to inflammatory diseases of the bowel, such as Crohn's disease. I don't have Crohn's disease. I have an inflammatory bowel and stomach disease, which I can tell you is debilitating. Debilitating, to say the least. I've now become the burping lady. Maybe I shouldn't cut out the burps now that I drink tea so that you can actually see what's what my life is really like. The minute that I drink something or eat something, I burp. That's what I do. I burp. Then there was fertility problems, which I'm not going to discuss here because obviously fertility is not one of my problems at this point in time anymore. And there is alcohol or drug addiction, which I'm not going to discuss because alcohol and drug addictions was fortunately not one of the traps that I have put my foot in to self-medicate the disastrous situation that I have found myself in. And then increased physical illness. This has also got uh, lots of uh, the relevance to me. People exposed to chronic stress can experience a decrease in the number of cytokines cells that trigger the production of more infection fighting cells so your body loses its ability to fight infection researchers attribute to this to the chronic presence of hormones released in abundance during stressful situations 
The result is that individuals experience chronic stressful life situations are more and more susceptible to catching a cold, flu or other infection than the general population. And I always say I can get a stomach bug over the telephone. I look at somebody with a cold and I get it. And I think that's why I had COVID three times. <clears throat> and I always give, get it 10 times worse than the person that gave it to me to begin with. Okay, now we're already on 51 minutes and I haven't done depression and I want to do depression because of homicidal thoughts which is capable of or tending towards murder or being murderous and that is something that I would like to address and I think I can do maybe a whole video on that because I want to take that and this is in, in, in closing I want to take that and that is for debate where people might think oh this woman um, to children that kill their parents and how the legal system the judici judicial system um, I think does not look upon that with the understanding and the sympathy that it needs to be looked at um, it's just this must be a horrible human being or a, a terrible child because they could kill their parents and some of them take the whole family out. Which I think maybe there should be a little bit more of a, a more understanding and a deeper look at what happens to a child that is in a caught up in a situation of which they cannot escape and nine out of ten times which are caused by the parents and whatever dysfunctional family uh, reaction and unit must then result of that and um, it's like an animal um, uh, it can be a loving animal if an, and we are animals Put an animal in danger and see what he's going to do. Can you blame it on the animal? We will make excuses for the animal. We always say it's the human's fault. But in a situation like that, we will blame it on the on on the child that cracked, that cra that cracked to such an extent that he killed his parents or her parents. And um, that's going to be a video for debating the comment section. Not that anybody. I don't have enough people watching my videos at this point in time that any debate will take place. But um, I'm not saying um, that and promoting that children must kill their parents. Please don't get me wrong. But I think when they have broken to such an extent that they snapped, that there should be more understanding of what happened and that sometimes it is a knee-jerk reaction and out of desperation, frustration and a feeling of helplessness like a caged wild animal. And on that note, I'm going to end this video. Um, if you are still here, um, then I want to thank you for watching and I want to say look after yourself as always. Maybe I'll see you next time.